Boo, what's going on, family? Appreciate y'all for tuning in, pulling back up for another reaction. Uh, today, y'all see it, y'all see that thumbnail. Uh, before I even introduce the video, I gotta appreciate everybody for holding us down, supporting our channel, and uh, and rocking with us the real way. Uh, today, I'm about to be getting into Shane Gillis, Beautiful Dogs 2023. Uh, the title of this video is Trump versus Biden. All right, hey, let me uh. Let me get ready. Let me get my mental ready because I don't I don't know what I'm about to encounter right now. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get into this video and cameraman hit that play button. Let's go. Dudes with Down syndrome <laughs> love women so much that like I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice. <laughs> but I will say every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a keeper. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's the end of that. <laughs> that's where that should end. Look, I was talking earlier. I'm not, I'm not a Republican yet, but I will say, I just want to see, like, for real, I don't care if they arrest him. If he loses the primary, I don't get, let him debate, dude. Let him debate. <laughs> All I want to see is him debate. <laughs> Okay, Hannibal, yo, if he, if he gets arrested, Hannibal Lecter him out to the fuck, just bring him on stage. Here's my idea, final debate of the year. I have one Republican candidate, one Democrat. Be like, all right, fellas, surprise third guest tonight. Hey, fucking stone cold music, the glass shatters. <laughs> he walks out, just, they're both gay. <laughs> I mean, see how they handle that. I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure of debating with Trump, dude, because so far none of them have been able to handle it. He literally, <laughs> every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no fucking idea what was being said. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually helped him, that worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head, dude. You can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> oh, man. Joe's not in there, good luck, dude. Shane Gillis, he is not lying. Especially when it came down to the debating, when when Trump went up, when Trump went up against Hillary, oh man, it it was fireworks, fireworks. Can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. He's literally <laughs> perfect. You can't beat him because Trump's old. Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit talking contest where he will win. He will win at that. He can't get Biden. He tries. Every, every debate, he's trying so hard, and Biden's just. <laughs> <laughs> he tries. He just, you're a loser. Your son did crack. And Biden's just, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, damn, dude, that's actually a pretty good comeback. <laughs> you might win this thing. Damn. I miss it. I miss the speeches with Trump. You remember that? We used to get we used to get five speeches a day when he was in office. Anytime you turn on the TV, that guy was giving another fucking speech <laughs> live, dude. Be in front of a helicopter, scream, calling a lady a lesbian or something. Like, <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one to defend at work, <laughs> but I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> now it's sad. Now with Biden, we get like one speech every three months. And it's hard. He's like falls and shit. It's hard to watch. It's sad. I'm rooting for the guy. Obviously, I want things to go well, but it's hard to watch him do anything. Anytime I watch Biden do anything, I get the same feeling as like, you ever go to a friend's house and they have like a 16-year-old dog and it walks in the room? And you got to do that whole like, oh, hey, there he is. Just look at him. He's looking great. <laughs> My favorite thing about Biden is... Any anytime Biden finishes a speech, he transforms into a Roomba. Just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. He ain't not right. He ain't right for that. I miss it. I miss the Trump speeches. Trump gave what I think was probably one of the greatest speeches of world leaders given. You know, it's got to be up there with like Churchill. <laughs> Gettysburg Address. <laughs> anyway, 
for real though, it was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was the night, it was the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS. Trump comes out of the Situation Room at like midnight in the White House, and he walks down that fucking tunnel like he's and gives a press conference, like he's giving a post-game NBA <laughs> just killed a guy press conference. He walks up in front of the entire world at midnight and just goes, Abu Bakar. <laughs> Al Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. I got to see that again. Hold on. I, I got to go back. I got to see that again. Al Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's all him, dude. <laughs> I didn't change one word of that. That's what he opened with. <laughs> and then he did 40 minutes. The speech is 40 minutes for no reason. It wasn't a prepared speech. He freestyled 40 straight. Not even a speech, just mean shit talk for 40. The meanest shit talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying. I said, Abu, don't cry. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Abu cried, he cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> Cry baby back daddy, that's what we were all calling. <laughs> Look, I love everything about that speech. I love it, I love thinking about Trump in the Situation Room, surrounded by generals watching a live, watching Special Forces, watching those cocksucking Navy SEALs. <laughs> Those mother, if I was in there, I'd be like, get out of that, Abu, run. <laughs> They're great lovers, don't let them get you. <laughs> ah, they got them. <laughs> ah, they're making them squirt. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, how can you do this? <laughs> That's what we should do. Yo. Of, you know, instead of Zero Dark Thirty killing these guys. We should break in and have our special forces fucking whack them off in their own bed. Oh! <laughs> that sends a pretty serious message, dude. Can you imagine that? Just four Navy SEALs holding your arms and legs. <laughs> You're the only dude without night vision. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh! oh. Yeah. Queer. <laughs> Bro. They fly away on a helicopter. You just got jerked off in your own bed. <laughs> you fucking jerked me off! <laughs> you make me do come! <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I just love, I love, I love thinking about Trump in the Situation Room, watching a live military operation. He's the only dude in the room that wasn't military. He must have been the only dude watching it that was like, oh! <laughs> like, you can tell he's never seen it before by the fucking speech. The speech sounded like a guy just trying to tell you some shit he saw. Just, a lot of guys would knock on the front door, not these guys, not our guys. <laughs> Not our guys, our guys went through the wall, they blew up his wall. <laughs> and they used dogs, beautiful dogs. <laughs> beautiful dogs is the funniest detail. Because it's true, they actually did use, it was the Army Rangers and they used dogs because they were afraid Al Baghdadi was gonna be wearing a suicide vest, so they <laughs> killed him with dogs and a robot. <laughs> and then made fun of him for crying. <laughs> Let that guy cry. That's the scariest death I've ever heard of. That dude was laying in his bed in the middle of the night. His wall exploded. <laughs> Fucking ten dogs and a robot broke into his house. Dude, ten dogs wearing helmets and goggles broke into his house. The Paw Patrol. The actual Paw Patrol. The Paw Patrol. All right, dude. You guys have been so great. Oh, man. Yo, I didn't know Shane Gillis did did impersonations, his Trump impersonation is spot on. Literally, like when he was doing his impersonations of Trump, I literally can hear like, like, like Trump, like he sounds exactly like how Trump sounds. This was really, really good for the simple fact. I haven't, I haven't, haven't seen much of uh, Shane Gillis, haven't seen, uh, except for maybe one or two of his standups, 
so far, I feel like this one is probably like the best one that I've seen from him just because he gave that comparison Trump versus Biden. When he said Biden, whenever Biden gets done and he just transforms into a Roomba, if anybody ever had if anybody ever had a Roomba, if you have a Roomba, if you know what that what it does when you cut it on and how it just goes like a robot and then when it hits a wall, it just turns. It, it, it literally has no direction. It just kind of just goes. If it hits a wall, it just turns, hit another wall. It's like almost like a ping pong effect type of thing. But when he said that Biden is like a Roomba. I damn near lost it because that's kind of how he walk. He walked like a Roomba. And I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it funky with you. That's just what it is. And uh, but the thing that definitely stood out to me out of all these jokes is the Trump comparisons, the Trump impersonations. He had that spot on. I don't know how long it took him to get that impersonation down. But so far, uh, as far as as far as Trump impersonations, I feel like Shane Gillis has one of the best Trump impersonations that I've seen. If y'all know of anybody else that has great Trump impersonations, let me know. Drop some comments. Uh, definitely comment on this video. Let me know what y'all think about Shane Gillis, Trump versus Biden. And uh, until next time, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so y'all don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. And until next time, I'll see y'all soon. Salute to all my real ones. Let's get it. Thank you.